Hola, Erin, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Muy bien, gracias. <laughs> so, today we're going to talk about the verb ser and estar. How has that been going for you in class? Um, bueno, good. Yeah, good? So, let's see, what are your main takeaways? What do you associate to the verb ser versus the verb estar? Now, they both mean to be, yes. but they mean to be in different ways, right? Yeah, so, can I speak in English? Of course. Okay, so ser is like date, like occupation, characteristics, mm -hmm. and a star is like where you are, how you're feeling, um, yeah, like position, actions. Exactly, right. So a really good way to break down ser versus estar is thinking about ser as more about permanent things, more about things that are like inherent to who you are, okay. right? So somebody is tall or somebody is a doctor, you would use the verb said because that's the more permanent verb to be. Yeah. But if somebody's sick or somebody is, you know, sad, these things come and go, hopefully, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be sad forever. Yeah. So when we need to express to be in a temporary kind of changing sense, we need the verb estar. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. All right, so today we're going to look at a really helpful set of acronyms that will help you to just remember that difference in a okay. pretty easy way. Okay. How does that sound? Good. Awesome. So the two acronyms are uh, doctor and place, and I have them right here. Okay. Um, so doctor is a really helpful acronym to remember the verb said, and it stands for date, occupation, characteristics, time, origin, relation. Okay. Now, that might seem like a lot all at once, but yeah. if you just review it, it should come it's a second nature pretty soon. But what's helpful about the acronym doctor is that the, the word itself is an occupation, yeah. right? So you think, oh, doctor, right, said, use the verb said. So, and then the one for estad, which we'll get to in a moment, is place. So we'll talk about that one in a moment. But okay. How do you feel with the verb said so far? Um, I'm I'm pretty like comfortable with some things. Um, others I could work more on. Okay. What are the ones that you find the most challenging? Like time and like sometimes I don't remember like date, like mm -hmm. numbers. Okay. Well, that's fine. We'll have plenty of opportunities to practice that. Um, so why don't we just maybe work through some sentences uh, using the different aspects of this acronym and really practicing the verb said. Okay. Maybe before we get into that, let's just conjugate the verb said. So really just, you know, use the present tense of said, see how comfortable you are with it, and then we'll work from there. Does okay. that sound okay? Yeah. Great. So, okay. In the yo form, in the present tense, how do you conjugate said? So, should I say like S? Or like, do you want me? So, that would be the he, she, like el, ella form. Okay. But what about like I am? How would you say I am? Uh, like, yo soy. Great, exactly. So, can you give me a sentence, uh, say, for example, with origin? Tell me where you're from using ser. Um, yo soy. Um, a vivo. Oh, wait, yo soy. Mm hmm. Like, Vivo in Hillsdale. Can I okay, that? so you're you're using two different verbs yeah. here. Yeah. Um, both of them are good for talking about like where you live, but said helps us tell tell people where you're from, right? Okay. And the thing about said is, you know, where you're from, that doesn't really change, right? Like yeah. you were born somewhere, and like that's something that's like a quality about you that doesn't change. Yeah. So that's why in Spanish we need the verb said. So you would want to say yo soy de. Day. Plus, where you're from. So, do you want to try it again? Yeah, so yo soy de Hillsdale. Excellent. Muy bien, muy bien. So, that covers origin. How about tell me who your sister is? So, we're going to practice relation now. Okay, so Megan um, está en la cocina. Okay, so this is great because you use the verb estad, right? Yeah. Which in a moment. I know we'll... it's supposed to be ser, but. Don't worry about it. You did a great <laughs> job with estad because you told me uh, your sister Megan's location. Yeah. And um, location is one of the uses for the verb estad, yeah. right? Um, but what if you were to just tell me something a little more like fundamental about her? You know, like. You could just say Meg is Megan. my sister or anything you want to tell me. Um, Megan S. Alta. Megan S. Alta. Excellent. So from the acronym doctor, that's the C, characteristics, right? Yeah. And that's something that's 
not going to change anytime soon, right? Yeah. She's not going to become short all <laughs> yeah. of a sudden. So um, Megan is alta. Megan is tall, right? Yeah. Um, great, great. So let's see. What about... Uh, now, I know you were saying that you were struggling a bit with time. Yeah. Do you feel up to trying an example try. of time? Yeah. Okay. So, now yeah, let's look at the time now. How would you tell me in Spanish what time it is now? Um, so, mas, so, wait, um, doce. Got it, good. Y veintiuno. Muy bien. Okay. Son las doce y veintiuno. Okay. Muy bien, muy bien. So, you see that for time, we need the verb said as well. Yeah. Now, you might be thinking, wait a second. But doesn't time change? Yeah. It does, of course. <laughs> but in Spanish, this is just one of those things where in that moment, this is true about the time. And you just need the verb said because that's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes with these things, you just have to memorize it because it's the rule. Mm -hmm. But um, the more practice you get with it, the more natural it'll feel. Okay. Um, okay, so let's see. What about for occupation? Can you think of you know, maybe someone in your family or anyone you know, and tell me what their occupation is. Um, uh, mi uh, abuela es un, una enfermera, like, infam yeah. Yeah, you got enfermera. it. Great, great. So you told me that your grandmother is a nurse, yeah. right? Great. One little thing here. So great use of the verb said, right? Yeah. Mi abuela es. Perfect. The only thing is, uh, with professions, with occupations, we actually don't need the article, right? The una. Um, uh -huh. We can just completely leave that out. Oh, and okay. you can say, mi abuela es enfermera. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's You're doing easy. really great. Yeah. Isn't it easier, yeah. right? One less thing to worry about, yeah. right? Okay, great. So, let's see. We've covered occupation. How about date? What if you were to just tell me, you know, um, you could tell me, like, when your birthday is, or you could tell me what today's date is. Um... Es sábado. Mm -hmm. um, like, do you want me to say the, like the date, like the numbers? Um, sure. Here, here's the date right there. Um, es marzo, um, venti tres. Ah, okay. So that would the word order there is a little more do similar you to English. Venti tres de marzo. There you go. You yeah. got it. Okay. See, you self corrected. Yes. That's awesome. So. You know, in, in English we say it's March 23rd, but in Spanish we would switch it around el 23 de marzo, yeah. so the 23rd of March. Yeah. If that makes sense? Yeah. Excellent. So that covers date, covers occupation, characteristics, time, origin, relation. You're a doctor now. How do you feel? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Um, are you ready to switch to the verb estar? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So a moment ago we were saying how said was for more permanent things, yeah. right? And estar is things that change, right? Conditions, states that can vary from one moment to the next. Yeah. Right? Um, so let's just kind of talk through how might that be the case for position? Um, like... When you're like, like you say, like, I style, like, if you're in the bus, like, in mm -hmm. uh, like off the boost, like, in the front or the back. Mm -hmm. So, so <laughs> what's the front? Uh, detrás? Isn't detrás back or something? Um, so, or like, detrás, detrás, yeah. Atrás would be back. Okay, atrás. Uh huh. Good, good. Exactly, right? Yeah. Your position can change, right? Yeah. You know, one moment you're at the front of the bus, one moment you're at the back. You know, we're constantly moving around. It would be pretty boring in life yeah. if we were always in one spot, right? Yeah. So that's pretty much what's going on with position there. It's changing. So let's, let's think of maybe another example. Or like uh, sitting? Sure, yeah. Like sentar? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would we use the verb estar? And this would probably be kind of a mix of things here. Okay. Uh, and just as a quick refresher, so place, the acronym for estar, stands for position, location, action, condition, emotion and we'll go through all of them in okay. just a moment but um yeah so with sitting how would you tell me you know i am seated or i am sitting um yo soy or like yo estoy yeah uh, sentar or oh sento. close close so we need um sentado or sentada in your case the feminine form okay um and I really like how you corrected yourself because you were starting off with yeah. sitting, right? Yeah. But think about this. Would you see yourself sitting forever and ever and ever? No. <laughs> right, right. That wouldn't be very fun, yeah. right? So we need a verb that expresses 
that you're sitting right now, but then maybe later you'll get up and do something else, yeah. right? So, yeah, so try it again, and you're going to want to use the feminine form, so sentada. Sentada. Go for it. Sentada. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yo estoy sentada. Excellent. Great job. <laughs> so that takes care of position. Uh, location. Well, why don't you tell me where you are? Um, yo... Esta, uh, yo estoy in um, Ivy Wise. Muy bien, muy bien. <laughs> yo estoy in Ivy Wise. Nosotros estamos in Ivy Wise. Yes. Um, and I realized that it could be helpful for us to just review the like the formation of the two verbs mm -hmm. before we continue with uh, the different uh, parts of the acronym. So uh, since we're working on a start now, let's just go through that and then we can review Sarah. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah. So, okay. So I'm going to kind of just lead us with the subject pronouns, right? Like yo, tu, el, ella, usted. And each time I give a subject pronoun, feel free to just, you know, jump in with the conjugation of the verb. Okay. Right? So the verb estar, right? Yo. Estoy. Muy bien. Tu. Está. Or están. Uh, es, está. It can be tricky to remember. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So yeah. tu estás. Estás. Yeah. yeah. Tu estás. Oh, yeah. Ellen, ella is a star. Exactly. Great. And that yeah. was the next one. So you're a step ahead. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, and do you remember anything special about the way that these are written or spelled? Um, they have the line on top. Yeah, the accent mark. The accent mark. Right. So um, estoy doesn't, right? No. But tu estás. Estás. Right? Does. You hear that emphasis, estás. Yeah. And sometimes I find that like my head moves forward and I don't <laughs> always realize <laughs> estás. <laughs> it's like a turtle head bobbing. But if that's what it takes to remember the accent mark, yeah. you know, whatever you need to do. Um, so tu estás. Um, and then just as you said, el, ella, ella está. está. And also usted. Remember? Estu yeah. Usted está. And that's the formal form, right? Yeah. How about nosotros? Estamos. Right. Um, now, in, in your Spanish class, Erin, do you use the vosotros form? Uh, we do like ellos, ellas. Is that mm -hmm. vosotros? Well, so vosotros, this is an interesting cultural That's uh, in lesson. Spain, right? Yes. Very good. Yeah, so we don't do that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, which, yeah, in the U.S., it's more common to learn Latin American Spanish just yeah. because the majority of Spanish speakers are from yeah. Latin America. Obviously, of course, there are people from Spain, so it's helpful to recognize it and, and know, you know it when you hear it, mm -hmm. but you're probably not going to use it a whole lot unless you go to Spain. Yeah. So the vosotros form is estáis. Estáis, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but don't worry too much about it. Yeah. We'll focus more on like the other forms which are more common in Latin American Spanish. Okay. Um, so finally, ellos, ellas, and ustedes. Es están. Están. Excellent. Yeah. Now, why don't we just take a moment to um, review the verb say. Okay. So, so we'll do the same thing. So, yo. Yo. Um, so, yo. Soy. Yeah, okay. great, great. Okay. You got it. Um, tu. Tu. To, I don't know. It is. To eres, okay. So how would we spell that? Let, let's spell e that in Spanish. Yes. In Espanol, por favor. Oh. E. Mm -hmm. er, e. R. R. A. S. 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 E. R. E. S. E. R. A. S. Muy bien. Tú eres. Tú eres. Okay. El, ella, usted. Um. And uh, I don't really know these. It's okay. S. S. Okay. S. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. So, so far we have yo soy. Okay. Yo soy two eres and el ella is dead is S. Excellent. How about nosotros? Esta, uh, somos. Somos. Nosotros somos, okay. which means we are, right? Somos. Um, fun fact, the vosotros form is vosotros sois. Sois. But we can focus on the ellos, ellas, ustedes form, which, do you remember that one? Um... It's son. 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 Oh, right, right. I knew that. So ellos son, ellas son, ustedes son. Yeah. Um, it's it's a tough verb. It's, yeah, that one's It's, it's very irregular, right? Yeah. You know, there are a lot of verbs that follow a pretty, you know, regular, distinct pattern, very predictable. Said just isn't one of them. Yeah. So, you know, I can completely understand why it would be a little tricky yeah. to keep track of. We but, don't use that too much, mm -hmm. like for some of it, like errors we don't really use. Okay, yeah. right, because you would have to be using that in like a conversation. Yeah. Um, 
That being said, the verb ser is one of the most important verbs in Spanish, just mm -hmm. because you'll see as you continue in Spanish that you build on that verb for so many things. Yeah. Um, but okay, so yeah, great. We reviewed the way that we form those two verbs. So why don't we kind of wrap up with the acronym, uh, the place acronym? So we had talked about position, um, location, action. Why don't you, you know, walk me through an action that you could be doing, right? And again, what is it about actions that make us need the verb estar, like a more temporary verb? Um, cause like you're. Like you're still doing it, like when you're like action is like you're doing it, so you need like a stop. Mm -hmm. And will you be doing whatever that is, whether it's reading or swimming or hiking forever? No. Right. It's just for a moment. Yeah. You're doing it, and then later you're not doing it. Yeah. So the, the the fact that it can just you know not be that permanent and really can change from one moment to the next, that's the key takeaway I want you to to go home with is that for the verb estar, it's all about temporary and like sort of changing states and conditions. Okay. Um, okay, so yeah, why don't you walk me through an action that you could be doing um, or anyone could be doing? Yo estoy, um, escribo la tarea. Okay, very close. So you're telling me that you're writing the homework yeah right i recommend a different um a different, like different. verb okay. i would recommend the verb hacer to do or to make okay. so i'm doing the homework but you see how in english i said i am doing that's the ing form yeah we're gonna need something similar in spanish we're gonna need like the ando yendo ending. oh yes so why don't you try it again with the verb um hacer so and estar. yo hacer. Mm -hmm. So yo and then the verb estar in the yo form. Okay. And then the like ing form of hacer. And then okay. la tarea. Try to piece it together. So yo estoy escribe like ando? Like, like you want me to put it there? Yeah. Okay. So escribe ando? So you got the right idea. Yeah. Um, so ando is for AR verbs. This is, oh, this is a great idea. Yeah, yendo. You got it. La you got tarea. it. Good. Escribiendo la tarea. If you were to use the verb hacer, that's an ER verb. It oh, also yes. takes yendo. Do you want to try that? Um, what does that say to me again? To do or to make. So to um, do your homework, for example. Uh, so yo as is it hacer? Um, oh, this is another one of those lovely irregular verbs oh, that right. always trip everyone up. Um, but why don't we actually just use estar, right? Okay. Um, like to express the idea that I am doing mm -hmm. um, my homework or the homework. Mm -hmm. um, so you can you know stick to estar, and okay. then you're just gonna want to use the ing form of hacer, so haciendo. Haciendo. So why don't you put that whole? So yo soy haciendo la tarea. Okay. Do you want to be sure you're using the verb? that. Um, oh, yo estoy? Yes. Okay. Right. Unless you want to be doing homework forever. I don't yeah, know about yeah. you, but I wouldn't sign up for yeah, that. So yo, so, yo estoy haciendo la tarea. Excellent. Very good, Aaron. Um, so that brings us to our final uh, parts of the acronym, condition and emotion. So when I say condition, what does that make you think of? Like if I'm sick or like, like healthy. Exactly. Right. You know, we would ideally want to be healthy all the time and yes. sick never, right? Um, of course, that's just not the way life works. Yeah. We do get sick every now and then, but thankfully, it doesn't last forever. Yeah. Right? So how can we express this very temporary thing of being sick? Like, you know, I'm sick, or you can even choose any other person. It doesn't always have to fall on you, you know? Yeah, so, um, like, nosotros estamos um, enferma. Okay. Or enferma. Most. Yes, great. We need the plural form because you, so you just said we are sick or yeah. ill, right? And so because we're talking about a group of people, we need the adjective to match that. Yeah. Okay. And then, so that's condition, right? And finally, emotion. So just kind of talk me through what is it about emotions that, that's so changing and variable? Like you can like feel like happy in the morning and then like sad later on. Yeah, right. So it changes. Yeah, life is full of ups and downs, and you know we would ideally love to be happy all the yeah. time and never <laughs> sad. But <sighs> if I could figure out the secret to making yeah. it happen, <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, as we go through our human lives, we have to you know deal with those ups and downs. So how could we express? you know, an up or a down in Spanish, emotional-wise. Um, so like, I'm not going to say myself, so I'm going to do like, mm -hmm. el estás feliz. 
Okay, él está feliz. Okay, so he is happy, and what that means is right now. But yeah. maybe later he might not be happy, right? Yeah. Maybe he'll find out that he didn't do so great on his Spanish exam, yes. right? But <laughs> why don't you tell me? So imagine that you're getting your Spanish test back, and you got a hundred. You worked really, really hard for it, because I know that you're studying very hard all the time for it. Yeah. How can you tell me in that moment? So put yourself in that moment. You have the test in front of you. You have that cien, one hundred. How are you going to express in that moment that you are like thrilled, happy, whatever it is you're feeling? Um, yeah, so yo es, mm -hmm. estoy mm -hmm. um, feliz, like, yeah. like now? Yeah, okay. estoy feliz, okay. right? And then maybe you walk out of school and then, I don't know, something not that great happens. Yeah. And, you know, so like, yo estoy, um, trying to remember sad. <laughs> Triste. Triste. Mm -hmm. Sí. Um, or like other feelings, or like, yo estoy confuso, because I'm confused why I'm like sad now. You can say confundida. Uh, confundida. confundida. Great. So, all right, why don't you just now, in your own words, just kind of explain to me what are the key differences between the two verbs that we talked about today? Um, English or Spanish? Um, we could do in Spanglish. So, you know, feel free to give me example sentences in Spanish, but feel free to talk me through the concept in English. Okay. okay? Go for it. So, ser is more like, it's like, it's not like feelings, it's like now, it's like mm -hmm. how you're like dates, times, like relations, mm -hmm. so like familia, mm -hmm. or like, um, a star is more like feelings and like, um, like a star, so like where you are, right. <laughs> so, exactly. and like emotions, like emotionata. Mm -hmm. And if you had to kind of sum it up in like one sentence as to what the key difference, so you gave a lot of good examples of, you know, when you use said versus when you use estar, but what about like, what's the, the key takeaway of when do you typically use said and when do you typically use estar? Um, ser... Um, uso, um, in, like, uh, I, I don't know how to explain, like, <laughs> well, let's like, maybe put it in terms of, like, permanent versus temporary, or yeah, 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 so, yeah, so, um, a star, no less temporary, it's, like, part of the dime, mm -hmm. so, like, it might change, mm -hmm. and Sarah is, like, you know, actually, like it actually is, like like I say my name and that is it. Like it's not going to change. Right, that's not going to change. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling with said and stuff? Sarah, I feel good and Star, I feel good. Great Thank job. Thank you. No, you're welcome. <laughs> De nada. Gracias. <laughs>